Sure, that's one way of looking at it, but it's totally wrong. Listen, they both need each other. It's called interdependency, and they both know it. Yeah, I know. He does terrible things to Tom. Nasty, even sadistic things. But that's fine, as long as that's what Tom wants. Think about it. His actions. He's always asking for it. It's his partner's job to fulfill that need, and Jerry knows that. Proof? Well, in the Tom and Jerry show, they live with each other. Hello? Hello? Jack, I can't believe the Bureau still can't get me a satellite phone. Puppies are making me go to another town in the boondocks again. Well, I'll be a happy camper, even if it ends up being a waste of time. At the very least, it'll get me out of the cramped city for a while. Right, Zack? Perpetrator from the last case really was something. Who'd have thought there'd be razors laced into your nails? Crazy. Just crazy. I now have a scar to show off. See this? I got this when I arrested the Catwoman wannabe. Women. They're crazy. Don't you agree, Zach?
Zack, there goes the civilized world. Looks like we're being welcomed. Zack, I'll let you handle the meet and greet.
crazy situations, but that one... That one takes the cake. It's the first time I've been attacked so directly. Zack, can you give me a logical explanation about what that was? Never mind, don't answer. Life is fun because of the mysteries. Right, Zack?
There's definitely something in this town. Do you feel it, Zack? My coffee warned me about it. Yesterday morning, the milk I poured in my coffee made a sign. It said, Tomorrow you'll arrive in a place that will change your fate. Now you were very late. I didn't think you'd keep me waiting in the rain for so long. FBI Special Agent, Francis York Morgan. Please, just call me York. That's what everyone calls me. Agent York? Good, that's good. Are you the sheriff? Uh, no, I'm Deputy Sheriff Emily Wyatt. George, he's the sheriff. He went looking for you, actually. He should be back soon. I see. If you don't mind me asking, did you walk all the way here? My car broke down, that's all. She's easy on the eyes. Definitely worth a trip to the primitive world. By the way, don't mention anything about what happened back there. She'll think you're a psycho. Don't want that, do we, Zach? Welcome to Greenvale. I'm the sheriff, George Woodman. Call me George. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, just call me York. That's what everyone calls me. Could you tell me why the FBI is so interested in a small-town homicide? Let's just say it's a personal interest in killers of young women. I'm always looking for new sample cases to help me with my profile. Both our superiors have cleared this with each other. You can remain in command. You don't have a problem with this, do you? No. No problem. Just want to set things straight. Our small town has its share of problems. I'm the one fixing them one by one and maintaining peace and order. You can have your profiling sample, but I need you to understand that. <sighs> of course. Of course. By the way, George, I had a little accident with my car. Could you send someone to take care of it? 
Oh, and my clothes and luggage are still inside. All right. Don't worry. I'll get my assistant Thomas to take care of it. Do you need anything else? Thanks. That'll be all. Well then, I think I'll rest up first at the hotel. Then I'll join you on your investigation. Don't know how to say that. Uh, we really don't need your help. Unlike some of your corrupt city police officers, I play it by the book. I hope you'll come to appreciate that, Agent Morgan. And we'll handle the investigation. You just think of this as a vacation. Take it easy. Enjoy the nature here. You don't have to be a tree worshiper to appreciate the wildlife here. Zach, let's reassess the situation. There are no cavemen here. We're as far forward as the Middle Ages. And we've just met the king. Who are you?
Zack, the symbolism in my dreams continues to intensify. A forest of red trees. A carpet with red leaves. A strange doll. And twin angels. But that child is what bothers me the most. I swear I've seen him before. I just can't remember where. Well, that'll probably come back to me eventually. For now, we need coffee. Let's head to the cafeteria, Zach. I hope they have some real coffee. I really need some coffee. Then we can head to the sheriff's office. There's a proper procedure for everything, right, Zach? <laughs> Mr. Morgan, your breakfast is ready for you. Thank you, Mrs. Polly Oxford. Just Polly is fine. Well then, thank you, Polly. I'm starving. Everything all right, Mr. Morgan? Yes, it's delicious, Polly. My compliments to the chef. I'm hoping my cooking will bring back repeat guests. Honestly, though, it's been a while since anyone has stayed here. I couldn't help but notice. Aside from you and me, there seems to be no other guests or workers around. What's that? The salt's in that white shaker there. Thank you. I was wondering if there were any other guests or workers here. Oh, no, no one else. My husband and I used to run this place, but he's in heaven now. You've been working here alone since then. Must be hard by yourself. Oh my, we're all out of pepper. I'm very sorry. It must be difficult to run a hotel by yourself. Well, yes, I suppose. I could just live on my pension, but I have to admit, running a hotel is kind of like a hobby of mine. That's nice. Polly, it might help to hear you better if you could sit a little closer. Oh my, Mr. Morgan, you're embarrassing me. So early in the day, too. I think I'm a little too old for you. And I still love my departed husband. May God rest his soul. I appreciate the invitation, but I'm fine over here. Polly, I can hardly hear you from all the way over there. You're exaggerating. This is fine. It won't do to be all clumped together with such a large table and cafeteria. We have to make use of all this space. <sighs> now tell me, that wound on your face, what happened? Let's just say I had some trouble during the last case I was working on. I'm sure it'll heal. It's just a flesh wound. Oh my, well, there's no need to be the tough guy here. I want you to be able to relax here. I've prepared a special room for you. A famous rock star once stayed in the same room, you know. Really? I feel honored. If you need anything, anything 
nothing at all. Just let me know. I'll help you out in any way I can. Zack, the lady is offering to help. Do you want to ask her about the town? Say, Polly, what can you tell me about this town? Well, let me see. You might know this already, but the town is called Greenvale. It rains here quite often, but it's a nice place, surrounded with nature. It was a big and was built back then. We saw plenty of guests in those days. That's why this place is so big for such a small community. I have so many fond memories from back then. I suppose the clock on the community center is quite famous too. Clock? Oh yes, it's lovely. It rings in the morning and at night to let the whole town know the time. You'll hear it many times during your stay. It's a beautiful sound. And you'll love it too, I think. I look forward to hearing it then. Anything else you'd like to know about? Yes, actually, Polly. Could you tell me about the shops around here? Shops? Well, there aren't many. It is a small town, after all. You can do most of your shopping at the Milk Barn convenience store. The couple who run it are a unique pair. I'm sure you'll get to like them. The A&G Diner is a great place to eat. They might be open even if my kitchen is closed. If you want to go to a bar, there are two. The Galaxy of Terror and the Sweary 65. I don't care much for either of them. Bars are for the younger folk. We also have a gas stand, of course, the art gallery, and even a gunsmith. You should be able to find what you need. Thank you, Polly. Well, Mr. Morgan, I better start cleaning up. You just take it easy. I'll bring your coffee out in a moment. Thank you, Polly. I have to warn you, though. I am very particular about my coffee. The very best you have, please. I understand. I'll be right back with it. Did you see that, Zack? Clear as a crisp spring morning. F. K. In the coffee. I knew I could count on it. it never fails. Now then, let's get going. Police car. So we have King George to thank for preparing a car for me. A pleasant surprise, eh, Zach? Let's take it for a spin.
I have to tell you, Zack, this place simply amazes me. The keys were left on the front hood, and nobody stole the car. Values. This town has what the country needs. Values. Let's head over to the sheriff's department. bonus features in DVDs nowadays. You know, the ones from the 80s have almost no bonus material. Even if they do, it's a trailer and the visual quality is pretty bad. Well, that visual quality is a good reminder of those days. So many new audio and visual appliances were coming out back then. Do you remember the first video deck we bought? We bought it to record one of the Star Wars movies on TV. And remember when that video store opened, we spent hours there just trying to find a good movie to rent. There weren't that many to choose from back then. I remember renting some really bad ones after reading those back cover taglines. Hey, remember? Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, filmed in 1978. Produced, directed, written, and edited by John DiBello. It was really awful, but for some reason I still remember it pretty well. It had so many sequels, and the original was re-released in 95. The 87 minute long theatrical release bumped up to a whopping 90 minutes. But that was around the time I joined the Bureau. I never had a chance to see it. I know, Zach. Once this case is over, we can watch it together. I bet we can buy a copy on the internet pretty easily. We're supposed to go through Anna Graham's file at the sheriff's office. A human bone? This doesn't look related to the case, but shouldn't I let someone know?
Speaking of 80s movies, one jewel in the rough springs to mind. Deadly Spawn. Do you remember that one, Zach? Back in 83, directed by Douglas McKinnon. Right, it was filmed pretty cheap, but still it was pretty good. The monster design with the mouth crammed full of teeth, I loved it. So many delicious B-movie cliches. Did you know that they made a sequel? But I never got to see the sequel. The rental store didn't have it for some reason. They said the staff for the sequel was totally different from the original. I wonder how the sequel turned out. You know, the monster in that one responded to sound. Wait, Zach. Sounds a lot like the movie Tremors. I think that one was back in 89, directed by Ron Underwood. Now that was a great role for Kevin Bacon. Masterpiece. Zach, that one had sequels like crazy. I remember there was a fourth one. I've only seen the first one, though. Hey, I'm working here. You can't just stroll into a chef's kitchen. Then perhaps you would give me your permission to enter. No! Get the hell out of here! Zack, everyone has their own sanctuary. Let's leave him in his. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. And you are? Olivia. Olivia Cormack. Olivia. Now that's a lovely name. Do you think so? You're the only one who's ever said that other than my father and Nick. Oh, it's a very good name. You should be proud of it. There's that famous singer too, isn't there? from the 70s. She's actually from England, but she's got this really strong image of being an American pop singer. Huh? That's it. Olivia Newton-John. You know of her, right? She's not only a successful singer, she's successful as an actress, too. Personally, I really liked Xanadu back in 1980. She played a cute fairy and just looked amazingly stunning. It's hard to believe she was 32 at the time. Right, Zach? Um, sorry, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Really? That's a shame. You should watch it when you get a chance. You'll learn to love your name. Oh, okay. So, Olivia, do you know anything about Anna that might be helpful to me? Oh, she was a bright and lovely girl. I can't believe she... Did she ever look worried or anxious? No, not really. I just... I, I can't believe it, really. I'm never going to see her again, am I? She was here with us, so happy and energetic just a few days ago. She and I... We were getting all excited over some new dessert. Thank you, then. If you remember anything else, let me know.
Tremors. I think Fred Ward was in it. You say Fred Ward, and I say Remo Williams, The Adventure Begins. That one was back in 85, I think. Directed by Guy Hamilton. Guess Hamilton was aiming to start a series like 007, but it had no sequels. Real shame. Do you remember the martial arts they used in that film? Called Sinanju? The ultimate in martial arts, using no weapons at all. Remo's master Chun ran across water, remember? And he loved the soap operas. Man, that was a good character. He was played by Joel Grey, the best supporting actor in Cabaret. Of course, in Remo, he had so much makeup on you couldn't tell. I've never seen you here before. You in town to see some sights? What's your name? I'm Gina. Folks call me the Rose. I'm Francis York Morgan, FBI Special Agent. I'm investigating the death of Anna Graham. FBI? Wow, how cool. And ooh, I like that scar. Do you have any info on Anna or any suspicious individuals? Ugh. I hate that complex stuff. Let's have a more simple conversation. Simple? Yeah. Do you want gas or not? Hmm. Uh-huh.
This makes it your sixth time. <laughs> to thank you for being one of our best customers. Today, you get the special service. Here we go. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Wash and tie this time. Shiny. Mm, looks pretty. <laughs> I'll clear. was fun. <laughs> Come again. I'll give you the special service every time from now on. See ya. Zack, that was some aggressive car washing. She's crazy. Like a cat in heat. You may have liked it, but I never want to go through that again. You from out of town? I ain't seen you here before. I'm Francis York Morgan, FBI Special Agent. I'm investigating the death of Anna Graham. Do you have any info on Anna or any suspicious individuals? I ain't got nothing to tell the cops. What about the FBI? Shut up! At least give me your name. I'm Jack. They call me Raging Bull. That's a manly nickname. <laughs> shut it! If you're a customer, act like one and shut the mouth. Huh? Jack, here's the Ben Franklin you wanted. Give it to me. Hey there, Benjamin. I wanted to talk to you. Have you heard this yet? I'll tell you another one when I see you again. <laughs> Zack, did you see that? It was as if we weren't here. I wonder what that was all about. Did it make sense to you?
So, you're the talk of the town. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please call me York. That's what everyone always calls me. The name's Keith. A pleasure meeting you, York. Sure is a big scar. It's bigger than I thought it would be. So, Keith, I have a couple of questions about the incident. Huh? Sure, fire away, man. Did you know Anna Graham? Yeah, of course, man. Poor little Anna. She was such a nice girl. I mean, what kind of sicko would do that to her? Well, I'm here to catch that sicko. Listen, even the smallest piece of information might be useful to me. If there's anything you noticed or want to let me know, contact me. Okay, will do, bro. You got my cooperation, FBI. Another thing. I'll be frequenting your store during my stay here. So I'll see you around. <laughs> sure thing, bro. We got what you need, so drop in any time. <laughs> FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. And you are? Lily Ingram. My husband owns the convenience store, and we have two sons. I like to think that I'm just a regular wife in a regular family. Aside from the point that our sons were the first witnesses to the crime scene. You seem pretty calm considering their involvement in such a big murder case. <laughs> you think so? I'm glad to hear that. Anyway, if I looked all bleak and gloomy, I think it would hurt our business. Uh... Agent Morgan, about that scar... Uh, Lily, please don't call me that. But call me York, if you can. People have been calling me York for a long time. You're a silly one. No, not at all. I'm just a regular special agent. <laughs> so what were you about to say, Lily? Huh? About my scar? Um... I'm sorry. I seem to have forgotten. It's because you said something silly. I see. Well, if you remember anything important, just let me know. I will. I'll probably be making use of your store during my stay here, so I'll see you from time to time. Okay, I'll see you soon then. Hi there. Hi there. You always look like a busybody. Is the job working you that hard? <laughs> it's not so bad, hon. I've gotten used to it now, really. You seem to be taking it easy. Sometimes it's important to take a laid-back approach. Pressing forward too quickly can be a recipe for disaster. <laughs> You're being silly. Oh, yeah. Hun, if you have time on your hands, can I ask you a favor? Such as? Nothing major. It's just our storage room is a total mess. Keith just makes it worse every time he tries to clean it up. 
and I can't move the heavy boxes in there. I used to ask my father to help us out, but, well, he's not that young anymore. Of course, I'll give you something in return. If you tidy the place up, I'll give you this. What's that? A bronze card. It's a discount card for the milk barn. You'll be able to buy things cheaper with this. I think it'll help you lower your investigation expenses. So you're saying that helping you out will ultimately help the investigation. Zach, what do you think? I don't mind if you want to help her. Thank you, hon. The storage room is this way. Thank you, hon. You've been a big help. You're a real hero. A hero? You just can't leave those who need help alone, can you? I can tell you now, hon. You're that kind of guy. Anyway, here's your reward, hon. You've earned it. We'll give you a discount from your next purchase. Thank you, Lily. We'd better be careful not to get carried away and overspend, Zach. Agent York, you're a good person. My father doesn't seem to appreciate you yet, but I do. And I'm sure Keith and the boys feel the same. Come by any time, okay? Hey, bro!
Joel Gray's daughter is, of course. That's right, Jennifer Gray. You know that, right, Zach? Jennifer Gray. She's in one of my most favorite movies. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. 1986, directed by John Hughes. That one was so 80s. Zach, you're not the most cheerful guy I know. But you really do like those cheerful movies. We used to love those teenage movies back then, didn't we? Breakfast Club and Pretty in Pink. St. Elmo's Fire and Fast Times at Ridgemont High. That last one was in 1982, directed by Amy Hecker. Now that was an impressive film. You've got Sean Penn in the lead, with Jennifer Jason Lee and Phoebe Cates, not to mention Nicolas Cage and Forrest Whitaker were in it too. And the original book and the script were written by Cameron Crowe. How could that not be a great film? Do you remember, Zach? When that movie ended, the last words, the end, was from an arcade game. That's right, it was from Missile Command. That stuck in my head for a while. The memories. I feel like I have a lot of movies to catch up on. Let's just hope we can get to the end of this case soon. Then maybe we can catch up on a few. Give some thought about what movie you want to see next, Zach. Zach, is there something here that you want to check out? We're supposed to go through Anna Graham's file at the sheriff's office, but if you want to act on a hunch, then I'm with you. A human bone? This doesn't look related to the case, but shouldn't I let someone know? 